Hello everyone, we are going to talk a little bit of Stranger Things today. We got a few articles to cover from Screen Rant. One of them is kind of hypothesizing and it would give me a good chance to have a discussion with you about a potential big death coming up and do you think they need one in the premiere of season 5 to kind of set the tone for the rest of the run of the series, which is this season. This is the go home. So we're going to talk about that and more right now. Stranger Things 5's premiere needs a big death, and who should it be? Uh, Stranger Things Season 5 brings the Netflix phenomenon to an apocalyptic end, and the premiere episode must kill off one major character. And I hate how they show Hopper here, because we thought he got killed uh, at the end of Season 3, and no, he was not dead. You know, he was in Russia in the prison. Uh, which led to that whole subplot with Joyce and Murray going over to save him. And the man with no face from Game of Thrones being involved as, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. Oh well. Uh, Stranger Things Season 5 must surely open with a major death. But only a single character ticks every box for that unfortunate role. Netflix Stranger Things is renowned for its blend of Stephen King-inspired horror and Amblin-esque childish wonder. For every teenage cheerleader contorting... To death on the ceiling, a group of geeky kids is goofing around in Ghostbuster outfits. The Stranger Things Season 4 finale signaled a drastic tonal shift, however. Uh, with a vexed Vecna finally making his move on Hawkins and the outside world, a catastrophic apocalypse-level event that threatens to consume all of life has finally erupted. I will eat your babies, bitch! The days of Dungeons and Dragons in Mike's basement are a distant memory, and that means that danger will be higher than ever in Stranger Things Season 5. The Duffer brothers have never been shy when it comes to killing beloved characters, and both Sean Astin's Bob and Joseph Quinn's Eddie would surely attest to that if they could. Curiously, Stranger Things has avoided killing any of the main cast thus far. The central six youngsters, the adult trio of Nancy, Jonathan, and Steve, and the adult coupling of Hopper and Joyce are all still fine, mostly. Um, yeah. So there, we'll, we'll kind of stop there for a moment. Uh, seeing Sean Astin's character enter the show and then get killed off was kind of, it was like, man, it was rough. He was, uh, he fit right in. Uh, he was a good counterpoint to Hopper, who is, you know, obviously the manly man, you know, Big Jim there. And, you know, you have, he's the more intellectual, uh, you know, the more soft-spoken, the more sensitive one. And he ended up dating Joyce, which, which they, they made a nice couple. But you really did. It was like you wanted to see Hopper and Joyce get together, you know, and, and it really. Uh... And then season three. They spend fighting like they're a pair, and it just, it, it was it was weird. It was just weird how they fought the whole time like they were an actual couple, and they never got together, and then, you know, she's trying to get him back, and it's just, yeah, it was very, it was very off-putting the way that they wrote that. That was my one uh, real complaint. Part of me understands the why they wrote it like that, but it's still... You know, it was just kind of annoying. It, w it wasn't really like that I didn't like it. I can understand if you're going to keep them apart. It was just the way they did it. In the middle of it. it was just kind of annoying. But anyway, so let's, uh, let's move forward here. I, I really, I, I mean, if I had to say who they were going to kill off, I would probably venture a guess to say it would be, it would be Hopper first. They'll kill, they'll kill Hopper off. They're not, I don't think they'll kill Joyce off. I think it'd be Hopper because he's the first one to sacrifice for the group. Why Stranger Things 5 needs a big premiere death. Uh, the Vecna, they did such a good job with that character. Uh, very Kruger-esque. You know, very 80s. Yeah, it was just a, a really cool aesthetic. Um, when Stranger Things Season 4 ended with Vecna tipping the upside down into Hawkins and cracking open the ground, it promised that Stranger Things 5, confirmed as the final season, would be radically different. Whatever war or invasion Vecna is mounting upon the real world, it leaves little time for cosplay and roller disco. With the main kids all grown up and Max ending season four in a coma, there is really very little for anyone to crack a smile in Stranger Things season five. In order to properly sell that more mysterious tone and raise the stakes for Vecna's return, Stranger Things 5's premiere must sacrifice a major character. 
that's going to be difficult. Uh, like I said, right now, I want you guys to leave your thoughts in the comments on if they if they do this, if they were to do this, if this is the way it's going to happen, who do you think it's going to be? I want to hear your guesses down below. Uh, like I said, I, I said a, a few minutes ago, I think it's going to be Hopper would be my best estimation. What about the kids? No, I don't see one of the main kids getting killed off right off the bat. Um, and if if Steve or if Steve dies, we riot. Uh, a big death in the Stranger Things season five premiere is even more important since Vecna is returning on the back of another embarrassing defeat. Unless Stranger Things pulls another massive twist, the Spider artist, formerly known as Henry Creel, will assume the final villain duties for Stranger Things ending. Vecna has, however, already been beaten twice. Eleven sent Vecna into the Upside Down when they were younger. Then Nancy's team defeated Vecna's physical body in 1986. Although he survived both times, Vecna has suffered two big losses. And Stranger Things Season 5 must provide an immediate reminder that the villain remains a huge threat. Killing off a beloved figure would appear the best and quickest way of doing that. This technique is tried and tested across multiple mediums with horror classics such as Scream, utilizing early deaths to create fear and tension in more family-friendly franchises such as Harry Potter, featuring the big character losses near the beginning of their final chapters to prove no character is safe. While killing a main character in Season 5's premiere would solve several big Stranger Things problems, however, it creates another in the form of deciding who should actually die. Okay, so right there... We, we talked about, like I said, I asked you, put yours, uh, your thoughts in the comments on who you think it's going to be. So who's it going to be? I want to speak to the previous paragraph, too, because we talked about who, you know, we think sh it might be uh, that's going to die. I agree with the writer here in saying that a death is the quickest way to get Vecna that villain status back because being beaten twice now, it, it's like a heel in wrestling. You know, a heel can lose, but it's the way they lose that's going to dictate how their character is perceived. And you want to keep them looking strong, even in defeat. So you make them go, you know, you make your, your baby face go over in creative ways, not just cleanly beating the villain. No, you know, there's, you know, the approach in the end of season four was this multiple pronged attack on Vecna. Um, <clears throat> due to his reach and his powers, so that's how they defeated him, you know, and Eleven beat him before he had realized all of his potential and his strength from being in the Upside Down for so long. So, yeah, that's, it is, it's a good way to bring the character back and, and make sure the audience knows how big of a threat he is. The asshole of an asshole's asshole. See, here's the caveat to all of what we just talked about. Stranger Things 5 can't kill any major characters too early. Uh, this is a great shot, showing all the gates and the crack open in Hawkins. Uh, but no, you cannot kill one. This is what I said, none of the kids will die. The kids and the adult trio of Nancy, Jonathan, and Steve, um, none of them can die right off the bat. It's got to be, like I said, it, it's going to be Hopper. The main six Stranger Things kids can immediately be ruled out of contention. Eleven, Mike, Dustin, Will, Lucas, assuming she recovers Max, are each vital components of the Stranger Things tapestry, and all six deserve to see the finale. Jonathan, Nancy, and Steve have slightly less claim to reaching the last episode than their younger counterparts, but all three have been vital to Stranger Things since the show premiered in 2016. And if any of that trio does die in Season 5, it would be a disservice for those moments not to come in or around the final episode, which is a good point. If one of those characters makes a heroic sacrifice, it definitely should be uh, in the, one of the last two episodes, you know, leading into a, a victory for our protagonists. Victory! Uh, Maya Hawke's Robin only debuted in Stranger Things Season 3, but her, I always forget about her, but her story is still ongoing. Following her famous bathroom stall revelation to Steve, the Stranger Things 4 season ending finally saw Robin connect with her love interest. To cut that story off by killing Robin as soon as Stranger Things returns would be foolhardy. Um, Robin is an important character, yes. But the reason that this article, I think, is leaning on protecting her because she just connected with her love interest is the barrier gaze trope. And she just came out as gay and killing her off would be playing into an old trope which they used as, oh, well, they introduce a gay character just to kill him off. 
Well, they introduce every kind of character just to get killed off. So it just so happens that they're one of them. I mean, it's kind of a nitpick uh, on the part of, you know, a very small, slim percentage. But, I mean, it does have a slight, slight bit of validity, I will give it that. As much credence as they want it, no. Uh, as the resident grown-ups, Joyce and Hopper are at greater risk than their younger companions, but killing off either of the Stranger Things, will they, won't they couple, makes little sense after Hopper died at the end of Season 3. The Hopper fake-out death means killing him for real would have far less impact. Kind of like Glenn in The Walking Dead. After Joyce fought so hard to reunite with their love, killing Winona Ryder's character at the beginning of Stranger Things Season 5 seems equally unlikely to satisfy ruling out another main character. Uh, so what is, is it going to be Murray? Is that what they're thinking? I, I forgot about Murray, too. Enzo? Yep, Murray. Eh, you know, that that one makes sense. You know, I can I said Hopper, but I mean, I guess I can see why they wouldn't. Change my mind. All right. So, yes, Glenn's fake-out death was diminished a little bit by the fake-out death. Hopper, I don't see it hap I don't see that being diminished, but it would leave an unsatisfied arc with him and Joyce finally getting together. So if he's going to die, if either of them are, maybe it's together, like Jin and Son and Lost, which was a heartbreaker uh, on the submarine. But no, Murray, I, I forgot about Murray. And yeah, it makes sense to kill Murray off. As much as I liked Murray Bauman, it it would make sense. Being as he's a like C-tier character, I guess you would call him. Uh, Murray Bauman should enter Stranger Things' final season with extreme caution. Although the Stranger Things Season 5 story would benefit hugely from a big premiere death, many of the main cast must survive for reasons detailed above. Equally, however, the victim needs to be a character with popularity behind them in order to elicit the desired emotional impact. Killing off Mike's dad, for example, is unlikely to tickle many tear ducts. Murray is, unfortunately for him, the perfect balance of Stranger Things character that inspires sympathy and adoration, but he has no real equity in the main plot. Really not important. That Murray survived his trip to Russia was a minor miracle. And one would be forgiven for suspecting his survival in Season 4 was decided with one eye on Stranger Things Season 5. He may not be a Stranger Things original, but Murray has been around long enough for his death to matter, and his natural awkward likability puts him alongside Bob as the perfect Stranger Things victim. Murray is kind, selfless, and gentle. But also, ultimately, expendable. Murray has no ongoing storylines to finish while his death in Stranger Things Season 5 finale would hit hard. It would not be detrimental to the overall ending. So we can grow and move on. All right, we're back over here on Screen Rant. This article came out about 17 hours ago. I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Stranger Things Season 4's finale set up the wrong prequel. And uh, with mysterious memory, Stranger Things Season 4's uh, seemed to set up a Spinoff centered on Max's backstory. However, this prequel wouldn't work. Um, yeah, they, they kind of did do that, but I don't think it was for a spinoff show. It, Although it did set that up with giving more background on Max. We've already seen the spinoff rumor shot down by these folks over here at the uh, Stranger Writers uh, room. The Stranger, This is Stranger Things Writers Twitter account. Uh, they shot that down, the one that... What was it? The direct put out saying the 11 pr that I reported on and then went back and corrected myself after the writer's room shot that down because, hey, I was wrong, so I wanted to correct it. But let's talk about this article from Screen Rant a little bit here. Uh, let's yeah. move past that. While Stranger Things might be guaranteed future spinoffs, the Netflix hit season four finale set up the wrong prequel show. According to Netflix CEO Ted Sarandos, Stranger Things will spawn not only one, but numerous spinoff shows in the near future. I think that goes directly uh, against what the Duffer Brothers said. Once the main show ends with the upcoming season five, Stranger Things will continue in the form of various shows that expand its fictional universe. The subject of these shows has not yet been announced, although Stranger Things season four seemingly set up a few potential prequels. Damn While Stranger Things Season 4 killed numerous spinoffs by explaining the backstories of Vecna, Dr. Brenner, and Hopper, this did not leave the show without other stories to tell. Dr. Brenner and Hopper's prequel stories were the subject of Stranger Things tie-in novels, but it's clear at Season 4 that the creators of Stranger Things will not be relying on these books when it comes to the show's spinoffs. There is, however, another character that Stranger Things Season 4 seemed to tease a prequel spinoff for, albeit not the right character. 
And we see the heading. It says how it set up Max's backstory. The tie-in novel, Runaway Max, set up Stranger Things' story and fleshes out the character's life before Hawkins. While the time jump between Stranger Things Season 4 and the final season means Max will likely be out of her coma by Season 5, the Season 4 finale used a memory of young Max skateboarding near a bridge in her coma dream. The episode never explained why Eleven ended up in this memory of Max's when she entered her friend's mind, but the event must have held a deeper significance. And yeah, I thought it was kind of um, odd that they went to that uh, memory for Max and they never really expanded on what it meant deeper. Uh, the curious placement of the prominence of Max's Season 4 skateboarding memory hinted at the potential story material for a Stranger Things prequel centered on a younger Max. The spinoff could explain the full context behind the memory seen by Eleven in Stranger Things Season 4. Unfortunately, there's no real need for Stranger Things to explore this memory in Max's backstory with a further prequel series. And I think Sadie Sink will be pretty much done with this franchise as she is rumored to have a role in the Thunderbolts upcoming movie as a character over there, one of the lesser-known X-Men characters. Uh, why Max's backstory wouldn't work as a spinoff. A Max-centric prequel show would need to star a younger version of the character, meaning that breakout series star Sadie Sink couldn't return to the role. Furthermore, it would take place before Max ever encountered anything supernatural in Hawkins, so tonally, the spinoff would be a drama rather than a sci-fi horror like Stranger Things. Unlike a Dr. Brenner Stranger Things spinoff, which would have delved into the early years of the Hawkins lab, Max's backstory can have no connection to the Upside Down, the Demogorgon, or Vecna. As such, this prequel show would rely entirely on audience interest in Max as an individual character. While Sadie Sink made a compelling presence out of Max in Stranger Things Season 4, this only worked because Max was growing older and more mature. When viewers first met her in Season 2, Max was not a particularly complicated character, and this would only be more of an issue in a show centered around the younger version of her. Much like how Stranger Things hero Will Byers needed to grow older before viewers could get to know his character, Sink needed a few seasons before getting to know the heart of Max, making Season 4's Tease Max prequel a less promising Stranger Things spinoff. All right, so to kind of wrap this up, I'm not sold on any spinoffs yet. I'm not I'm not going down that road again. Um, you know, I was kind of under the impression that the creators themselves didn't want to do any, although I did hear there was possibly an animated spinoff show potentially teased. But as far as prequels go, you have to recast every role that the kids played. Um, the only ones you could really do would be like a Steve Harrington, but then you're going to have Jonathan and Nancy involved, okay? They could still... But that would mean the kids would have to be involved in some shape or form, so you can't have the older actors and then the kids recast. It just wouldn't make sense. So I, I just don't see any... Unless it was like a Hopper one, but then, like you said, with the Max potential uh, for a prequel series for her, it would be a different actor. Uh, it would be... Uh, Hopper before Hawkins, so there would be no Supernatural, which the show is entirely based on the premise of supernatural uh, occurrences and things of the like, so you can't really do that. Um, but now it's your turn, folks. What do you think? Uh, do you think there's going to be any spinoffs? If there are, would they be set you know, afterwards, or be, uh, would they be prequels? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know who you think is going to die if they kill off a character. Do you think it's going to be Murray? Or do you think it's going to be one of they'll be ballsy and kill one of the main cast off? Let me know what you think. Thank you for supporting the channel. We appreciate all our channel members. Uh, the Monday Night Crew, the Horsemen, uh, the Wednesday Night Holy Shit News Crew, my editor extraordinaire, good stuff. Thank you very much, gang. I'm E. Temple Cooey, and from the place to be reviews, I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I'll catch you on the next one. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all.